so we'll be having n number of inversions okay by fixing each link we'll get one mechanism so those are nothing but inversions okay write a, write a note like this if there are n links in a mechanism if there are n links in a mechanism number of inversions possible are n 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 just write down like this so kinematic chain if you fix one link it's called as mechanism if i use this mechanism it's called as machine voice of some local mahul gaya and then concentrate jada so kinematic chain with one link fixed we call it as mechanism okay let's try it is all about kinematic chain so if it's a simple mechan simple machine uh, it will be having only one mechanism so sometimes you may be having combination of mechanisms in a machine okay it depends upon what kind of motion is desired okay next i don't degrees of freedom degrees of freedom degrees of freedom is important uh, there will be questions in gate from degrees of freedom i don't degrees of freedom degrees of freedom So whenever I say degrees of freedom of a pair, degrees of freedom is nothing but number of independent relative motions possible. Okay, number of independent relative motions possible. Whenever I say independent relative motions, so you should be in a position to move in any direction without affecting the other motions. So if I take a circular rod in a circular hole, a circular rod in a circular hole, you have two degrees of freedom. One I can rotate the rod, and second one I can reciprocate the rod. So I can reciprocate the rod without rotation, or I can rotate the rod without reciprocation. so these two are independent or i can do both of them simultaneously so it has two degrees of freedom if i take a screw pair in a screw pair if i take a nut and screw so i will be having only one independent motion okay so i cannot rotate the screw without reciprocating it or i cannot reciprocate it without rotating it so the two motions in a screw pair are not independent okay they are dependent so number of independent motions in a screw pair are only one number of independent motions in a screw pair are only one whenever i say degrees of freedom degrees of freedom is number of independent relative motions possible the side of like is degrees of freedom degrees of freedom degrees of freedom of a pair degrees of freedom of a pair is defined as degrees of freedom of a pair is defined as number of independent relative motions possible degrees of freedom of a pair is defined as number of independent relative motions possible both translational and rotational degrees of freedom of a pair is defined as number of independent relative motions possible both translational and rotational both translational and rotational number of independent relative motions possible both translational and rotational Actually, listen here. If I take a body in space and this is unconstrained, okay? Whenever I'm, whenever I say unconstrained, there is no restriction. So this body can move in x direction. This body can move in y direction. This body can move in z direction, and it can rotate about x axis, y axis, and it can rotate about z axis. Okay? So it can rotate about all the three axis, and it can translate about all the three axis. For an unconstrained body in space, you will be having six degrees of freedom. Just write down like this. an unconstrained body in space an unconstrained body in space describes an unconstrained body in space describes 6 degrees of freedom 6 degrees of freedom 3 translational degrees of freedom and 2 rotational degrees of freedom 3 translational and 3 rotational 3 translational and 3 rotational okay so but we don't have spatial mechanisms in our course we just have Planar mechanisms in our course. 
So if I take a body, unconstrained body in a plane, if I take an unconstrained body in a plane, it describes three degrees of freedom, okay? So for planar mechanism, there should not be any motion perpendicular to the plane. So if I take this marker, so I can rotate this marker, this is a perpendicular to the plane, okay? The motion is perpendicular to the plane. If you see the velocity vectors, they are perpendicular to the plane. So I don't take that, I just take this. An unconstrained body in a plane describes three degrees of freedom. I can move this in x direction, I can move this in y direction, I can rotate this about z axis. An unconstrained body in a plane describes three degrees of freedom. This side of unconstrained body in a plane, unconstrained body in a plane describes unconstrained body in a plane describes three degrees of freedom. Unconstrained body in a plane describes three degrees of freedom. Two translational and one rotational. Two translational and one rotational. Unconstrained body in a plane describes three degrees of freedom. Two translational and one rotational. Okay. So there is one more definition for degrees of freedom. Okay. So degrees of freedom is number of independent related motions possible or one more definition, just write down like this. Degrees of freedom is defined as degrees of freedom is also defined as degrees of freedom is also defined as the minimum number of independent parameters minimum number of independent parameters degrees of freedom is also defined as minimum number of independent parameters minimum number of independent parameters required minimum number of independent parameters required to describe position and motion of the system minimum number of independent parameters required to describe position and motion of the system minimum number of independent parameters required to describe position and motion of the system how many independent parameters are required to describe position and motion of the system or how many independent related motions we are having this is, this is nothing but degrees of freedom, okay? Rotation about y axis. If I take this one, so there will be no rotation about y axis, okay? If I try to rotate this about y axis, I can say, if you see the velocity vectors, I can see if I, if I take any point here and if I draw the velocity vector, it will be perpendicular to the plane of board, okay? If you are rotating this. So, in planar mechanisms, there should not be any motion perpendicular to the plane, okay? Are you getting my point? There should be motion only in a single plane or multiple parallel planes. So I can translate this along x direction, I can translate this along y direction, I can rotate this about z axis. And if I try to rotate about any other axis apart from these three, I mean these three motions, so the motion will be perpendicular to the plane of board. And if it's perpendicular to the plane of board, so it's not a planar mechanism. Okay. So that's only for a cylindrical body. This one. Okay, it has, this is a different case. This is a spatial mechanism case, okay? It's a case of spatial mechanism. Okay. Whenever I say planar mechanism, there should be motion only in parallel planes. If it is rotating like this, the velocity vector will be out of the board, okay? Screw pair, the sudden screw pair has one, only, one, only one degree of freedom, okay? Screw pair has only one degree of freedom. Because the two related motions in screw pair are not independent. Screw pair has only one degree of freedom. As the related motions in screw pair are not independent, okay? They are not independent. Just listen here, everyone. So we have seen the two definitions for degrees of freedom. One is number of independent related motions possible, and second one is minimum number of independent parameters required to describe position and motion of the system. So I'm taking a body something like this. I'm taking an object something like this. This is my system. So if you look at this, I can move this in x direction, I can move this in y direction, I can rotate this about z axis. I can move in x direction, I can move in y direction, I can rotate about z axis. These are the three independent related motions. I can move this in x direction without moving in y direction, or I can move in y direction without moving in x direction, or I can rotate this without moving in any of these directions, or I can combine all the three motions and I can have this. They are independent, okay? Whereas in a screw pair, they are dependent. You cannot do, you cannot rotate it without reciprocate translating. You cannot translate it without rotating. So they are dependent, okay? 
So for this body, so I can move in x direction, I can move in y direction, I can rotate about z axis. It has three degrees of freedom. In other way, I can say like this. So second definition, if this body goes to some new position, something like this. If this body goes to some new position, how many independent parameters are required to describe position and motion of the system? I can say it traveled by some distance x, it traveled by some distance y, and I say it has rotated by some angle theta. So I need three parameters minimum to describe the complete motion of this particular body. Okay, and the three are independent, okay? All the three are independent parameters. So minimum I need three independent parameters to describe position and motion of the system. So this is one more definition. Let's listen here. If my system is having only one unconstrained body, if my system is having only one unconstrained body, I can move this body in x direction, y direction, I can rotate this about z axis. This is having three degrees of freedom. So if I say my system is having so two bodies like this, two bodies like this, what is degrees of freedom for this? I can move this in x direction, y direction, I can rotate about z axis. I can move this in x direction, y direction, I can, so I can move this in three possible directions and this also in three possible directions and these are independent, so you will be having six degrees of freedom. So if I say my system is having three objects like this, if my system is having three objects like this, so I can move this in three possible directions, this in three possible directions and this in three possible directions, so this has three degrees of freedom, this has three degrees of freedom and this has three degrees of freedom, so degrees of freedom for this system is nine. When I have one body, degrees of freedom is 3. For two bodies, degrees of freedom is 6. For three bodies, degrees of freedom is 9. So I can say if there are n number of bodies, so degrees of freedom will be 3 times n. For one it is 3, two it is 6, three it is 9. Okay? So degrees of freedom, if there are n number of bodies, degrees of freedom will be 3 times n. So this is for a kinematic chain. In a kinematic chain, all links are moving. But whereas in a mechanism, in a mechanism, all the links are not moving, one link is fixed. What happens when you fix any link? If I fix one, I can, I can move this in x direction, y direction, I can rotate this about z axis. But when I fix this, I cannot move in x direction, I cannot move this in y direction, I cannot rotate this. Whenever you fix any body, it will lose all the three degrees of freedom it has. Okay? So now it lost all the three degrees of freedom. If you fix any body, it will lose all the three degrees of freedom. So if you fix any body, so I can say like this, if there are n number of moving bodies inside your system, degrees of freedom will be three times n. In a mechanism, one is fixed. So I can say, so the body which fixed, it will lose all the three degrees of freedom. So I can say for a mechanism, so degrees of freedom will start from three into n minus one. And for a kinematic chain, degrees of freedom will start from three times n. Okay, if all the bodies are unconstrained, but in general all the bodies are not unconstrained, they are connected, okay. So whenever you connect two bodies, there will be some restrictions. What is the figure T? So this figure T is nothing but I am calling, the, I am assuming these are the links, okay. These are different links. Just for easy identification, I just took some shapes as A, B, C, D and so on. These are different links, okay. So, These are different links. This is one link. The shape of the link is like that. So if there are n number of bodies, degrees of freedom will be 3 into n. But in a mechanism, one link is fixed, right? So when you fix one link, if there are n links, degrees of freedom is 3 into n. If you fix one link, the fixed link cannot move in x direction, cannot move in y direction, cannot rotate. It will lose the 3 degrees of freedom. So degrees of freedom will be 3 into n minus 3, which we can also write like this. Okay. Now see here, but these bodies are unconstrained, okay? They are free to move wherever they want, but in general they are not free to move in a mechanism, they are connected, okay? So what happens if you establish a connection? What happens if you establish a connection? These are two links. These are two links. So if you find out the degrees of freedom for this system, it is 6. It is 6. If I establish a connection between these two links, I am connecting these two links with the help of a turning pair. So turning pair is a lower pair. I established connection with the help of a lower pair. I established connection with the help of lower pair. Now how many degrees of freedom this system has? How many degrees of freedom this system has? Now see here, I am holding T. 
when I hold T, I can rotate X about this point, right? I can rotate X about this point. I can rotate X about this hinge, that is one degree of freedom. That is one degree of freedom, X is rotating. And I can move T in X direction, I can move T in Y direction, I can rotate T also. X is rotating with some speed in some direction, now T is also rotating with some speed in some direction. So when I fix this, I can rotate X, I can move T in X direction, I can move T in Y direction, I can rotate T also. The system will have 4 degrees of freedom. Earlier when there was no connection, degrees of freedom was 6, but when you establish the connection, degrees of freedom will decrease, okay? So there will be some additional constraints because X cannot move in X direction without taking T. So X cannot move in Y direction without taking T. So X lost 2 degrees of freedom. So X can do only one thing, it can only rotate about T. It can only rotate about that pitch. Okay? Now see here, so if I take three bodies, if I say this is my system, if I say this is my system, degrees of freedom is 9. All the three are not connected and all the three has three degrees of freedom. So total is 9 degrees of freedom. If I establish a connection between them, what happens? If I establish a connection between them, so I am connecting the links with the help of turning pair. So turning pair is a lower pair, okay? Turning pair is a lower pair. How many degrees of freedom this system has? I'm holding T, I'm holding X. When I hold T and X, I can rotate A about this hinge. That is one degree of freedom. I can rotate X about this hinge, two degrees of freedom. X is rotating and A is rotating. I can move this T in X direction. I can move the T in Y direction. I can rotate T also. So I can say this system has five degrees of freedom. So when I establish the connection with one lower pair, so we lost two degrees of freedom, okay? I lost 2 degrees of freedom. When I establish connection with 2 turning pairs, 2 turning pairs in the sense 2 lower pairs, how many degrees of freedom we lost? 9 minus 5, I can say 4 degrees of freedom. When I establish connection with 1 lower pair, I lost 2 degrees of freedom. For 2 lower pairs, I lost 4 degrees of freedom. If you try with 3 lower pairs, you will be losing 6 degrees of freedom and so on. I can say for each lower pair, we are losing 2 degrees of freedom. If there are L number of such lower pairs inside the system, your degrees of freedom will decrease by 2 times L. So for every lower pair, we are losing 2 degrees of freedom. For L number of lower pairs, degrees of freedom will be 2L. You take anything, so if I substitute in this formula, 3 links are there, 3 3s are 9, minus 2 times number of turning pairs, 2 turning pairs, lower pairs basically, it can be any pairs, sliding or turning. 2 lower pairs are there, 9 minus 4 is, you get 5. Degrees of freedom is 5. Okay, whenever you establish connection, your degrees of freedom will come down, okay? So in a similar way, this is, this is all about lower pairs. If we establish connection with the help of a higher pair, what happens? If we establish connection with the help of a higher pair, what happens? Let's see here. So I'm taking these two bodies. So whenever you have two bodies with two different shapes, the contact will be a point contact or line contact. Okay. So if you are having two similar kind of surfaces between two links, uh, in such cases you will be having a surface or area contact. So whenever you have two dissimilar surfaces, you will be having a point or line contact. It's a higher pair basically. So if you try to find a degrees of freedom for this system, so I can move this in three independent directions, I can move this also in three independent directions, degrees of freedom is six. If I establish a connection between these two bodies, if I establish a connection between these two bodies, so I am saying these two are forming a higher pair. Whenever I say higher pair, they should not lose contact, okay? So how many degrees of freedom this system has? So I can translate this on the block. I can translate this on the block, that's one degree of freedom. I can rotate this disk on the block, that is two degrees of freedom. I can either rotate this or I can either translate this, these are the two degrees of freedom. Now the block is fixed, okay. I fixed the block, I am translating the disc, that's one degree of freedom. I am rotating the disc, that is second degree of freedom, two degrees of freedom. Now what I can do is, so I can move this block also in x direction. I can move the block in y direction. Now this entire block I can rotate also. I can rotate. So I can say we will be having five degrees of freedom. So between these two, there are two related motions and this entire thing can be moved in x direction, y direction and can be rotated. So I can say, 
when there was no connection, we had six degrees of freedom. When we established connection with the help of a higher pay, we are having five degrees of freedom. We lost one degree of freedom. Whenever you establish a connection with a higher pay, you will lose one degree of freedom. Okay, you lose one degree of freedom. For each higher pay, you lose one degree of freedom. If there are h number of higher pays, you will lose one into h number of degrees of freedom. One into h number of degrees. That's the formula for calculating degrees of freedom. Okay. This is a formula for degrees of freedom of kinematic chain. For kinematic chain. And this is a formula for mechanism. So what do you mean by transverse direction? Transverse direction in the sense perpendicular to the board. I cannot move that. If I move perpendicular to the board, it's not a planar mechanism. So we are talking about planar mechanisms, which has maximum three degrees of freedom for an unconstrained body. Okay. That's the formula for calculating degrees of freedom. you are talking about a particular situation whenever you want to calculate degrees of freedom so you have to count all the possible situations are you getting my point so i am just counting how many total degrees of freedom we can have so that is the disc can slide with respect to the block the disc can rotate with respect to the block or the disc may not be doing anything that's a different case okay but it can it can translate it can rotate we are just counting that Kumar, we're just counting how many motions we can have. Cam follower also the same thing. So I can rotate the cam and I cam as the cam rotates, the follower will be reciprocating. The follower reciprocates as the cam rotate, and you can also rotate the cam, okay? We are we're just counting how many degrees of how many possible motions we can have. Okay, these two formulas are applicable for both higher and lower pairs. You can see N is number of links, L is number of lower pairs, H is number of higher pairs. It's applicable for both the cases. Okay. This formula is also called as Kutzbach's criterion. Okay. Kutzbach's criterion. The formula is also called as Kutzbach's criterion. Kutzbach's criterion for degrees of freedom of planar mechanisms. Okay. Kutzbach's criterion for degrees of freedom of planar mechanisms. So when they say Kutzbach's criterion, this is the thing. Okay. So I hope you understood what the mechanism is. There's small terminology difference. One is mechanism and one is linkage. Whenever I say mechanism, mechanism is something like the one which has both higher and lower pairs. If your system is having only lower pairs, that is termed as a linkage. So mechanism is the most generalized word that is used, okay? It refers to anything. Basically, if, it, if your system is having higher pairs and lower pairs, that is termed as mechanism. If you are only having lower pairs, it can be called as mechanism and at the same time, it can also be called as linkage. Linkage is a mechanism with only lower pairs, okay? Just write down like this. Just write down one point. So whenever they say linkage, it's a mechanism, okay? Just write down linkage is a mechanism with only single degree freedom joints or only lower pairs. Lower pairs are single degree freedom joints, okay? In a planar mechanism, just listen here. In a planar mechanism, if you see the lower pairs, the lower pairs that we can have in a planar mechanism are a sliding pair and a turning pair. So turning pair, so when two links are connected by turning pair, we can have only one degree of freedom. Sliding pair, so two links can have only one related motion that is sliding. So lower pairs are also considered as single degree freedom joints. And higher pairs are called as double degree freedom joints, two degree freedom joints. So whenever your system is having only lower pairs or 
single degree freedom joints, we call it as a linkage. The sternum, a mechanism with only lower pairs is called as linkage. Mechanism with only lower pairs is called as linkage. Just go back and write down, degrees of freedom is also called as mobility. Mobility and degrees of freedom both are same. Mobility and degrees of freedom both are same. Uh, Subham's pedicle joint is not a planar mechanism, okay? It's a spatial mechanism. Spherical joint is a spatial mechanism. So you can have relative motions in x, y and z directions. 